Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Stupendous Wave, and in this video we'll be looking at the Jurassic World Bashers and Biters Spinosaurus. So let's go ahead and get started and look at the packaging. So of course, upper left hand corner we get the Jurassic World logo looking very nice. Right hand corner we get a picture of the T-Rex, which looks really good actually, very very well detailed. Really, really adore that picture of the T Rex. Of the T Rex, yes. And then at the bottom it says Spinosaurus, ages four and up, chomping attack. Here we get kind of the tail movement that we see. Hasbro logo, Jurassic World, Spinosaurus. On the back we get kind of a nice look at the figure. This is uh, basically what the prototype looked like of those images that we got. Again, another Jurassic World logo. It says up here a ferocious fight for survival. Spinosaurus up at the top. Chomping Jaws, Jurassic World logo, uh, Universal, Hasbro, and then Jurassic World Spinosaurus. And that's basically it for the packaging, except for it's this skin color right here. I don't know if you can see this, it's a fairly large figure. But it goes from kind of this like darker white and blue into more of a reddish color, which is very interesting. It's kind of really reminiscent of the Bad Boy and Dominus Rex figures. Uh, color change feature which is really interesting. I definitely think that this is referencing it because it's really kind of a grayish plastic from what I've seen and then it changes into a more red f uh, feature for its color change um, feature and stay tuned for a review for that. It will be coming very soon but that's just kind of what I think the packaging is referencing. So now that we've talked about this let's go ahead and get him out of his packaging and take a look at the Jurassic World's Spinosaurus. Welcome back guys, and now we can see we have this figure out of its packaging. Uh, I am actually really, really enjoying this figure thoroughly. It looks really, really great. Again, the Spinosaurus. I like the new design they've given it to it. It's kind of an updated version. Again, I don't think that this is going to appear in the film. But for a figure, I like it. Uh, it's got a little bit of some extreme colors, but we really don't know what colors dinosaurs wore in the first place. So it fits. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with talking about the sculpt. Uh, we'll just start with the tail. We got just a regular sculpted tail right here. I got a couple of details in there that look pretty dang good. Um, but it's just one color. Uh, a lot of ridges in here, as I hope you guys can see. Um, it looks pretty good here. Uh, very happy with that. And then, of course, the gimmick. Then we move on to the leg here. And we've got the Jurassic World logo right here and the feet which look really really nice actually um, a big hip as as the spinosaurus should be uh, again it has a big hip because in the spinosaurus uh, in the jp3 movie it did walk on two legs it was a bipedal animal so this one should be bipedal as well i really love the feet the feet look great um, both of them are sculpted very very well again on the other side we got another big hip right here and just a great walking pose just like this just standing like this this figure looks great in my opinion again we have the sail up here which looks very very well very very well very very good and another thing I really like is that they've added some damage to this right here and then if you turn it around you can see it's got some damage right there so maybe this thing has been in a scrap pretty soon it's been a um, or it's been in a scrap recently maybe it's been fighting another t-rex who knows uh, we do see, of course, the hands here. The hands look good as well. Um, very, very happy with them. A uh, little piece of S excess plastic right there on my figure. But other than that, it looks fine. Underneath, we have, of course, the regular ridges. And on the side, we get some dino damage. A pretty big chunk, actually, compared to the others. The Spinosaurus looks like it's actually been through a whole lot. Maybe it just gotten through a, a brawl with another theropod. Um, but yeah, the damage actually starts all the way down here, and then of course we see the two bones as per usual. The sail appears sculpted very nicely. We get some bumps and ridges here, and ridges on the side, so it fits very well. The head looks great. Um, the teeth, I would have liked to see a couple more teeth in this mouth, but for what we got, it looks really good. The eye is sculpted very well. This head is sculpted, of course, so it would move for the gimmick and, of course, the regular articulation. But the mouth looks good. It's got almost a purple interior. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's got like a purplish interior. 
except for uh, a couple of green parts where they're just not able to finish the paint in there, but the teeth are more of a, a regular teeth color as a tan color as they should be. But I like the head sculpt. It looks really, really good. Again, we get some more bumps here and then the nostrils a, a little bit up here. And it looks overall for sculpt overall really good. So for sculpt, this is actually one of my favorites. I think the Stegoceratops as of right now actually has the best sculpt. But this figure is a very close second. I really like this. And I like this interpretation of the Spinosaurus actually quite a bit. It looks very intimidating. And it looks like a great update for the figure. So next, let's go ahead and talk about the paint job. So it's predominantly this light green color. And then, of course, we get some orange here. A couple of brown spots, again, with the JW logo. The nails or the claws are, of course, painted black here and both here. The Dino Damage is kind of a pinkish red color, again with the white bones. Then we get some more brown throughout here. And then when we get closer to the head of the figure, it's still co it comes up here and it's still a brown color. And then it switches back to the orange color, similar to what it is on the sail. And then we get the tooth colored and a more of a purple interior for the mouth. And actually a green eye, which I really like. I like the fact that the eye is green. I think it fits it perfectly. Um, it goes with this color. It's a similar color to the body, but a little bit lighter and it really pops on the figure when you see it in person. I'm not exactly sure if the camera is doing it justice, but it pops in person and I really do enjoy it. And it's just an awesome piece to look at. So next, let's go ahead and talk about the articulation. So with the other figures, um, predominantly the Ankylosaurus and the Stegoceratops, you're really only limited to one with to one pose it is not the case with this figure, which is why I think that this is one of the better ones. You can open the mouth. It does not stay. It's spring loaded. It will go back part of the gimmick. You can move the head kind of like that. Uh, it will always open the mouth. You can't really prevent the mouth from closing even as right here. It's pretty stuck. Um, so that's kind of articulation, except it will always go back. Both arms do move, which I really do like. This arm is fairly loose. I'm not sure if it's like that on this figure on your figure if you get it, but on mine this arm is much looser than this one. The legs do move, and something I like is you can kind of get it in like this burrow down uh, hunting state where it's kind of closer to the ground and ready to go, and it will not fall over, something I like. They sculpted the tail upwards so you can have it in these poses and it will not fall down, and the legs are sculpted very appropriately that you can have it not fall down and it will look great. And also you can have it stand, I'm sorry that his head goes out of camera, um, but you can kind of see here that it can go quite a bit up, uh, kind of have it reaching at something. Maybe you can have it uh, reaching at Mr. Kirby on the crane. Uh, if you want to have this Spinosaurus uh, represent the JP3 Spinosaurus, although they're clearly completely different animals, uh, not, not completely different animals, but a different they're clearly different um, than each other. This is not the JP3 Spinosaurus at all. But I do like the updated version. It looks good. Again, the long snout here. And here is the feature or the basher biters, the gimmick. You can move your move the tail side to side. And this gimmick actually works really well on my figure. I've had a couple of problems with the Stegoceratops moving its head. Not the case with this figure. It moves its head fine if you move the tail left to right. And if you go up and down, the head will move up and down as well. I'll try and do that without moving as much this time. There you go. So yes, it looks very, very good. I'm overall extremely impressed with this figure. I like that it can stand very, very well. That's something I really enjoy and I think is important that you can be able to have it uh, kind of down in more of a tack position and at the same time reaching up in the air, biting at something that may be at a uh, maybe a little bit taller than its height. So overall, I really enjoy this figure. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to pick this up, I really recommend it. Uh, it's not a bad buy. For $10, it's perfect. So don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, stay tuned for more reviews, and have a great day.